Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I am a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the Configuring Lag Interfaces JWeb Learning Byte. All right, here is our example. In our example, there's a topology I want to point out. Here we have two devices, VSRX1 and VSRX2. Now, note that these are security devices, but this is the same for configuring lag with JWeb for any Junos device. And so, yes, we will be adding the AE0 interface to security zones, but the rest of this learning byte does apply for anything else that runs Junos that you can use JWeb with. Okay, so getting that out of the way, so we have VSRX1 and VSRX2. Between those two devices, there's four interfaces, Gigi005 through Gigi008. And those interfaces are going to be member interfaces for the lag. And the lag is going to be AE0 for the interface. And we're going to use the 10.1.5.0 slash 24 subnet for that AE0 interface. So with that, we want to use JWeb and we also want to use LACP to monitor the lag interface members. And then lastly, we'll want to test this by communicating across the AE0 interface. So with that, let's go ahead and jump to JWeb for VSRX1. All right, so here is JWeb for VSRX1. And we need to go first to configure mode and then interfaces and then link aggregation. You might first think that we need to go to the ports workspace as we are configuring an AE0 interface, but we need to configure this under link aggregation. So the first thing we want to do is click the global settings. And here we can configure a few different things. We can configure a device count and we can configure some advanced LACP configuration. So with the device count, we need to set this to one because what this does is this will create AE0 in the system. Now, if we were to set this to two, it would create AE0 and AE1. So keep that in mind. And so with this learning byte, we only really need AE0. And then we have some additional LACP type configuration such as system priority and link protection. And we do not need to configure any of that for this learning byte. So let's click OK. And then we need to click the Create button to create a new lag interface. And we'll call this AE0. And then we need to select the member interfaces. Recall that it is going to be Gigi 5, 6, 7, and 8. And then we need to select the LACP mode. Now we can select active or passive. And all that really matters is that one side is set to active, which means we can have both sides set to active, one side set to active, the other side set to passive, but we cannot have both sides set to passive. So we'll just select active, and then we have some other LACP parameters. One thing we do want to do is VLAN tagging is configured by default. We want to turn that off for our example. And then click OK to create the AE0 interface. And that's created. Now, what's not created is a logical unit. We did specify the parameters and the member interfaces for AE0, but we did not specify the logical unit yet. So we need to select AE0 and then click the Add Logical Interface button. And here we have some parameters, such as the VLAN ID, if we have VLAN tagging enabled, and IPv4 and IPv6 addresses. Now we are doing IPv4 and not IPv6, so we only need to expand IPv4 address field and click the Create button and enter the information. Enter the IP address and subnet mask, click the Check button, and click OK. And that's been created, but we're not done yet. Since this is a security device, we need to add this interface to a security zone. So we go to Security Services, Security Policy, Objects, and then Zone slash Screens. And here we can create the zones of screen. We're under the Zone List tab. And so here's where we can create a new zone and add that AE0 interface. We'll call this zone Lag, and it's going to be Security Zone, and we need to add the AE0 interface to it. And recall, we want to test this functionality with seeing some ping requests. And so we need to change the host inbound traffic zone, or we could do interface, either would be fine. But we'll go to the host inbound traffic zone tab. And here we can move the all parameter over. So that's going to include everything as far as services that will also include ICMP. Now, if this was production, you wouldn't want to do this. But for a learning byte, it's OK. Click OK. And then we need to commit the configuration. And now we need to do the same on VSRX2. So let's go ahead and jump to JWeb for VSRX2. All right, here is JWeb for VSRX2. So let's go to Interfaces, Link Aggregation, 
and then global settings, set the device count to one, and then we need to create the interface. We'll call this AE0, and then we need to select Giggy 5, 6, 7, and 8 for the member interfaces. We'll set the LACP mode to active and turn off VLAN tagging. And next, we need to select AE0 and click the Add Logical Interface button. And we need to add the IPv4 information, slash 24 as well, and click OK. And then we need to go and add the interface to a security zone. So we're going to create a new security zone. I'm going to call this lag, move over AE0. And then host inbound traffic, we need to set the services to all. And then we need to commit the configuration. And unfortunately, there's not a way in JWeb to look at the LACP information. However, we can go to administration under tools, and we can ping the other side. Ping host. And recall this is VSRX2. So we want to ping VSRX1 across that lag. And you can see we are getting replies. And so that's great. Lag is set up correctly. We are able to communicate. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure lag interfaces using JWeb. Thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.